The atmosphere is red hot. Are you ready? Drop the bass. Oh, yes! Electric Aaron. Fantastic. Robert Thornton. Carry on, guys. Are you kidding me? The big boys of Darts are in town, the first of our quarter-final nights of the Slam. A night featuring three world champions and our last major winner. A very warm welcome to day seven of the Singer Beer Grand Slam of Darts from the Civic Hall here in Wolverhampton. It should be a fabulous Friday night. The first of our quarter-finals, the 2008 Lakeside champion, the man who knocked out Gary Anderson, Mark Webster, takes on the 2012 champion in Wolves, Raymond Van Barneveld. And then a repeat of the 2013 Grand Slam final, Robert Thornton, the World Grand Prix winner, against Phil the Power Taylor, the defending champion. Hi there, good evening from Wolverhampton. An eye featuring Barney and Taylor is always going to be special. Can the two giants of the game remain on the collision course to meet in the semi final? Yesterday, the BDO bowed out. Cracking night in prospect once again, and what a way to get us underway. And suddenly, Chizzy has to take this out, needs the ball for a 170! What a match we've got on our hands! And Michael Smith is continuing to hammer in 180s relentlessly. Pressure on Chizzy. Pressure on Chizzy. Michael Smith wraps up a memorable victory at the Grand Slam of Darts. Steve Beaton has got to make hay while the sun shining because it doesn't shine very often when you're playing this man. And you've got to feel that Fanko will have a dart at the bullseye. Look at that face, that's frightening. That is emotion, that's adrenaline for you. Van Gerwen has been literally unbeatable. He will not be contained. Then he's just under the 110 average. Michael Van Gerwen has produced a darting masterclass to blow Steve Beaton out of Wolverhampton. And tough one to call this one. But this is nice from Jackpot. Another fantastic finish. He didn't need it, but he got it. No problem! The doubles are back for Peter Wright. Passion and drama and tension, it's got the lot. Very desperate times for Peter Wright. Lewis now, the clear favorite. Will he go for it from here? Double eight for the match, yes he does! Magnificent effort, Adrian Lewis goes through to the quarterfinals here. Can Wolfie make it through to the last eight? Kenya Martin. I think someone should tell Martin he's 59 because he clearly doesn't know. But look at the reaction. Well, Kim Hybrex has caught fire here. Martin's hanging on here. <laughs> Still smiling! This would be one of the best finishes in this year's Grand Slam. The pressure that Martin was under was immense. That's what the best do, they produce under that pressure. For the match, and Kim Hybrex wins an absolute classic, a nail-biting thriller. So Martin Adams bowing out to the competition in a last leg decider against Kim Hybrex. With him go the hopes of the BDO. Hybrex will play Michael Van Guren, who averaged 109.18 in a 10-2 demolition job of Steve Beaton. Michael Smith in great form against Dave Chisel, 104.593 die average, 9 180s for him. He faces Adrian Lewis, who averaged 104 in his victory over Peter Snape by right. Those matches Saturday night, and these will be sorted out tonight. Mark Webster against Barney, Robert Thornton against Phil the Power Taylor.
Eric and Wayne here. Eric, Martin Adams played a great part in this whole tournament, didn't he? Played a great, great tournament. He won all his three games in a group. Only lost 10-9 last night. Took some really crucial finishes out when he needed it. Showed he's got lots of bottles. I'm glad he went out that way. I didn't want to see him get through and play Michael Van Gerwen and then get battered. Because I don't think he deserved that. And he's gone out gracefully. And uh, now the tournament carries on. Van Gerwen was exceptional last night. Yeah, there's not a lot Steve Beaton could do. He played well, averaged 9 100. Michael let him in once and he, he took his opportunity. Winning two legs, averaging nine a ton over that format is, is horrible. You feel like you're doing all you can. And Steve, it, like uh, Eric just said about Martin Adams, you can go out on a high sometimes. Even though he lost 10-2, did Steve beat, and he will feel like he did a little wrong. Michael was outstanding. That's one of the best performances we've ever seen on this stage. And uh, he's the man to beat. And Smith and Lewis played their part as well in an exceptional night of darts. Van Gerwen still the red hot favourite from Phil Taylor, Lewis and Barney. Uh, rightly so. Um, if Van Gerwen carries on playing like he is at the moment, I can't see anyone touching it, to be quite honest. Let's run you through the betting as far as tonight goes. The second quarter final sees Thornton against Taylor. Thornton a big price at 3 to 1. Well, he's an attractive price. I must admit, I, I wouldn't be backing him for one reason. I don't think Phil Taylor will average 91 again. I think he'll be ne nearer 100. And it's a long format now. If you can average, average anywhere near a ton, and the first to 16, you're going to be hard to beat. You really are. And I think Phil will do just that. Kicking off the night, Webster against Barney. Any thoughts on that one, Eric? Uh, Webster finished superb last round. He's 71% finishing. But his average is not as high as Barney's all the way through the tournament. Barney must be on a high after beating James Wade. I can't see Webster lasting over 31 legs. Well, the Deutschman is focused and ready for battle. Happy with my game. My, my doubles helping me big time. You know, I played a really good game against uh, Gary, but he was uh, murdering the board, of course. He, his average was, was fantastic and his doubles. At the end, it's, it's, it's a group game, you know. Um, at the end, I survived the group and I'm in the top eight now and Gary survived the group and he went out uh, in the next phase to, to Mark Webster. You want to have perfection, but even in the year I won, I got beat in, in, in the first or second game against Christian Kist. But at the end, I got him back in the top eight quarterfinals and I beat him there. So, the only thing is really important is, is to go far in the tournament. This is a new thing. I've never seen Raymond do this before. Touch of the Alec Ferguson's from James Wade. Clearly annoyed. Well, the match has moved into Barney time. The machine has broken down. What happened was I, 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 I saw myself uh, not concentrating enough. And I took some time to, to think about it and, and try to get me back in the zone, you know. And, and James was probably affected by that, I don't know. But I'm thinking, you know, is it, is it not fair that I try to play my own game? I, I'm not like a tactic player, you know, everyone knows me. I like to win fair and square, and if your opponent's got problems with that, then you have to work on yourself, you know. I was 18th in the world, you know. No one's interested in that, only me. I have, the only way is up, you know, I'm, I'm in the top 60 now. If I win more matches, I can go in the top 10. So it's really important that I stay in my zone and stay in my focus. And even the way I was playing, to take from time for myself and try to focus to get back in the zone, even James was missing doubles. I can't do nothing about that, he missing doubles. He's throwing the darts, not me. It's, it's, it's sometimes hard. If he thinks I'm, 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 I'm cheating or whatever, it's hard to shake someone's hand. But at the end, you should do it, of course. Uh, I think he, uh, I heard he apologised on Twitter or on social media, but uh, never to me. So, to me, that doesn't count. I know Mark for many, many years, and he's world class. He still is, and he struggled uh, for the last two years, maybe two, three years, to get into rankings. But uh, that doesn't mean you can't play darts. You know, he's he's a great player. Uh, the only reason you play darts is if you you want to lift trophies. The the, the money in, in in sport is fantastic, of course, but it's, it's nothing compared to to lift a trophy. And and everyone is talking about you. You know, the the crowd is singing, the crowd is sharing your name. Uh, Commentators are talking about you, people at home, wife, family. If you come back with a trophy, it will mean the world. Very open and honest interview there from Barney. The, the tactics of slowing down clearly helped him. Yeah, well he, he, was, he was not going to win. Wade was playing, he was not going to beat Wade. Wade was playing too well for him. So if you're losing, you've got to go to plan B. Plan B is step back a bit, slow him down, see what happens. 
and it works. Uh, and that's not cheating. That's, Wade's got to deal with that. You're not cheating anyone. You're just taking your time. That interview was very honest. He said he, he knew he was in trouble. So stand back, take his time, think about it more. Hey, it won. He won. I don't know about if it, whether we're going to get an apology or not, but he won. <laughs> It clearly concerned him that he dropped out of the world's top 16 for a while as well. Well, yeah, it concerned him enough to change tactics and try to do something else to win. You can't always outplay people. That, that's not always the way. That's why you get gamesmanship within any sport. But world number 18 for Raymond Van Barneveld, there's not 17 players in the world better than him. But he's not playing enough tournaments. And the big ones, the, the ranked ones, he's not doing well enough in. He's got to put that right, and he has already. Quick word about Webster, it's 71% on his doubles last time out against Anderson. Marvellous, he's going to have to do that tonight. And I, I just can't see him do it. He's on a little dream at the moment. The last 18 months he's come back from nowhere. Good luck to him. I, we're all happy for him, but I can't see him getting any further than tonight. Cheers, boys. The waiting's over. It's time for Dars.